Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. A 68-year-old Moses Lake man is charged with multiple counts of possessing child sexual abuse material. 7th District State Representative Joel Kretz and leaders of the Colville Tribes joined Governor Jay Inslee in Olympia yesterday for the signing of Kretz's final bill as a state legislator. Isolated showers and possibly a brief thunderstorm tomorrow before our weather really warms up this weekend. All the details coming up in your full local weather forecast. Planners for the city of Wenatchee are recommending permit approval for Garden City Academy, a Christian school established by Grace City Church. The project was the subject of a public hearing Tuesday at City Hall. The K-12 school would hold classes in the King's Orchard Church Building at 1610 Orchard Avenue. Neighbors in the area have noted concerns about increased traffic and possible noise, as well as past conflicts over noise and parking between Grace City and the neighbors of its main Sunny Slope campus. About 25 people attended the afternoon hearing. About 55 written comments were submitted, mostly opposing the plan. My property shares a property boundary line with, with um, Kings Orchard Church on the north side grassy area. The size of the field is much smaller than surrounding schools, recess playgrounds, or athletic fields. Um, Let's see. So it started out Garden Seed Academy and their first application said it was gonna be for recess. That area was gonna be fenced in for recess and then it became, it was gonna be used for recess and PE and now I hear recess, PE and sports. So I have a concern about that. Most concerning is that uh, people driving their children to and from the school only use Orchard Avenue for access to the facility. The only access to our development, Pershing Circle, is off of Pershing Street which is accessed via 5th Street. This small dead end street is already very busy with vehicular traffic from neighbors and from people driving to Sage Hills Church and Sage Hills School, which is located at the corner of Pershing Street and 5th Street. Further complicating the congestion is compromised pedestrian access between our development and 5th Street given incomplete sidewalks. Um, Columbia School, if it does shut down, Half of those students will be coming to Washington Elementary, so we will have a massive increase in traffic coming to Washington Elementary right around those peak hours. And when we say we're increasing from 87 trips on that road to 868, I'm not a genius, but that's moving a decimal point. That's significant. Maybe it's designed to handle that many cars, but that is a massive shift in numbers. But the city says the school application meets city code and Grace City Church leader Kyle Strong told the hearing examiner they want Garden City to be a good neighbor. There are a lot of concerns about noise. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Would the applicant have any objection to agreeing that there's no, gonna, not going to be any outdoor amplified music or noise on the site for, for the school? Uh, well, in in that regard, I'd say I'd, I'd, I would uh, expect that we would we would be uh, treated under the noise ordinance just like like everybody else. Uh, again, we don't anticipate having any um, outdoor concerts or anything like that. Just uh, again, the hours of operation typical of a school. I, we don't anticipate will be a problem. We want to be good neighbors. We want to be courteous and considerate of those around us as well. Um, and so the expectation would be uh, the, the current city code already provides for noise ordinance and already provides for noise disturbance and nuisance. And so uh, I would think that that would be sufficient to, to, um, for us to operate under. Andy Kotkamp, the city's hearing examiner, is set to make a ruling on the permit within about two weeks. 
A landmark at Wenatchee's famed Omi Gardens County Park is no more. Ox Yoke Lodge, a rustic shelter constructed in the 1930s by original park founder Herman Omi, collapsed over the winter after several years of being closed off to the public. The log shelter became structurally unsound and park supporters were seeking fundraising sources to try and save it when it finally fell down on October 31st. Park managers say major elements of the lodge remain intact, like the patio floor, stone fireplace, and most of the furniture. The former lodge space will be used for other purposes after the park reopens on April 15th. A 68-year-old Moses Lake man is charged with multiple counts of possessing child sexual abuse material. Michael Allen Boyer was arrested Tuesday after local, state, and federal agencies served a search warrant on his home in the 4200 block of Airway Drive Northeast. The Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force in Seattle allegedly cataloged child porn material that was sent across Boyer's online devices last September. The Grant County Sheriff's Office said as the search of Boyer's home found at least 11 instances of illicit online material and alleges that more than 100 video files had been uploaded from his IP address. He's now jailed in Grant County facing 15 counts of illegal child porn possession. The Washington State Patrol District that covers North Central Washington says you'll be seeing more of its vehicles in the first week of April. State Patrol District 6 plans a series of high visibility enforcement patrols in Chelan, Kittitas, Grant, and Okanagan counties. The idea is to reduce serious injury and fatality collisions by showing a visible presence on the area's highways. Washington State Patrol says the focus is on distracted driving, which can lead to accidents while motorists have their eyes off the road. Nearly 10% of collisions investigated by District 6 troopers last year involved a distracted driver. Only 7% of collisions involved impaired driving. When we come back, the Washington State Department of Commerce says it will divide $2 million in grant funds among 10 economic projects, including one in Moses Lake. And the Wenatchee Foothills Trail Systems will officially open for outdoor recreation starting April 1st. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. The madness has started at the National RV Show. Being hosted once again at the Grant County Fairground. March 20th through the 24th. Top manufacturers are coming from across the country. Like Grant Design, Flagstaff, Thor, Forest River, and SMC Horse Trail. Thanks on site with super low interest rates. Zero down and no payments till July. Enter to win 30000 in cash. Or a new 2023 StarCraft trailer. No purchase necessary. Shoot the basket and get an additional $500 off after you make your deal. The National RV Show has Grant Design, Flagstaff, and more. At the Grant County Fairground. March 20th through the 24th. Abby says thank you to all the hometown heroes making our community so great. If you know a deserving hometown hero, shoot us an email, hero at abbeys.com. Every week, we'll thank some of these heroes with a free giant pizza. Abby's, proud to serve your community. Be a hero tonight. Treat your family and friends to Abby's famous hometown hero pizza. This giant features our classic pepperoni, tasty Italian sausage, and crisp green peppers for a one-of-a-kind legendary flavor. Visit abbeys.com for a special pizza at a very special price. Digital Media Arts program, we learn about video production gear and editing by the combination of class projects and nonprofit work and employment. Over there. It makes things happen. Yeah. It's pretty magical. We work in the industry at the Wenatchee Road, NCW Life Channel, and the Town Toyota Center event. Every day we work with industry standard equipment for a hands on learning experience. 7th District State Representative Joel Kretz and leaders of the Colville Tribes joined Governor Jay Inslee in Olympia Tuesday for the signing of Kretz's final bill as a state legislator. 
Colville Tribes Chairman Jared Michael Erickson and fellow tribal executives were on hand. Inslee signed Kretz's House Bill 2424, which directs state wildlife agencies to collaborate closely with the tribes on wolf managements in the northern part of the Colville Reservation. After the signing, the tribes gifted both Inslee and Kretz with ceremonial blankets. Kretz finished his final session in the House of Representatives this month after 18 years holding the seat. The Wenatchee Foothills Trail Systems will officially open for outdoor recreation starting April 1st. The trails have been closed since the beginning of December as part of an annual routine to provide winter refuge to mule deer and other local wildlife. While the trails will be open, there is some scheduled work to take place. This spring, Chelan Douglas Land Trust will be performing trail maintenance work across the foothills beginning with Saddle Rock. Sections of trails will be closed intermittently while that takes place. Meanwhile, the PUD will be working to replace four wooden transmission structures with fire-resistant steel, but trails are expected to remain open. Coming up next, Wenatchee Police Chief Steve Crown will retire from office effective June 14th after eight years steering the department. In tonight's feature story, he sat down with Jefferson Robbins to talk about his career. Scattered showers possible tomorrow with sunshine and much warmer temperatures this Easter weekend. I'll have all the details coming up in your full local weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. There's no place like home, because home is where we're totally comfortable. It's where we can be ourselves and let our guards down. It's where we make memories, and we're always imagining new ways to keep it totally comfortable. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air, Heat and Air, call Alpine Air. At Kennedy Group, we understand that buying and selling is more than a transaction, and it's more than just a house. This is where you will gather with friends and family, and where a lifetime of memories will be made. But buying a home is more than memories. Oftentimes, it's your biggest financial decision. The agents at Kennedy Group understand this and provide real estate advice based on your goals and dreams. Call us today, and let's find your happy place. The Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents Wonders of Wooden Avenue. Culinary Apple is North Central Washington's premier kitchen store with everything you need to elevate your own culinary experience. A walk on Wooden Avenue wouldn't be complete without a stop at the Chelan Chamber of Commerce. There you'll find all the information you need about local businesses, events, and activities across the entire Chelan Valley. Wonders of Wooden Avenue, North Central Washington's premier shopping district. Shoot, I think I left my keys in the kitchen. Can you grab them? Yep. Find them? What's this? It's a locking bag. It keeps Grandma's medication safe. But I could just take it. Well, for one thing, it locks. And if it were gone, I'd know there's a problem. Huh. Well played. Help prevent opioid misuse before it starts. Visit GetTheFactsRx.com. Wenatchee Police Chief Steve Crown will retire from office effective June 14th after eight years steering the department. In his 33 years of policing, Crown has been both a patrol officer in Wenatchee where he started his career and a fish and wildlife officer where he headed the agency's entire enforcement division before returning to the Wenatchee Valley in 2016. In tonight's feature story, he spoke with NCW Life's Jefferson Robbins about about the differences between the two jobs. One day you would be over in the sagebrush of eastern Washington and the next day you could literally be on the San Juan Islands uh, working salmon fishing. Um, yeah, there's, there's differences in the type of enforcement, but it all comes down to knowing the laws of the state and being able to enforce them in a very proactive way. That's, I think, the biggest difference between, let's say, conventional law enforcement and natural resource law enforcement is a lot of uh, the calls for service in uh, 
say municipal policing, a lot of that is call driven, meaning you're getting dispatched to a lot of different calls. Um, not so much in a natural resource law enforcement world where a lot of it is proactive work, which really drives um, a, a lot of uh, game wardens. And that's what, what is really exciting about that job is uh, you're really being proactive out there and protecting the resource. Did you want to come back to the Wenatchee Valley for, for specific purposes, family, that kind of thing? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When I asked my wife, uh, when I heard that Tom Robbins was uh, going to retire, I asked her, I said, hey, um, I was informed that uh, uh, there's an opportunity over in eastern Washington. Uh, and she said, uh, I, I asked her, do you, do you want me to apply? And she said, absolutely. Uh, this is something that uh, we both agreed upon would be great for us to finish out both of our careers and coming over here. So competed for the job and, and uh, here I am. The Wenatchee Police Department has grown in the number of officers by about 10 from 38 when you came in as chief to 48 now. Um, does that reflect a, a different kind of needs in the city that you've seen uh, come into play since you came on as chief? Yeah, I mean, there, there's been uh, obviously the growth that has happened, uh, the old station annexation is part of that. Um, I think that there's been increasing need on many fronts. Uh, the calls for service have gone up um, considerably. I think uh, when I first started here, there were somewhere in the neighborhood of about 18,000 to 19,000 calls for service. We're up around uh, knocking on 24,000 calls for service right now. Um, mental health continues to be an issue. Uh, I think um, fentanyl is, is a big issue. Um, our, I think from 2022 to 2023, uh, we had a 12% uh, crime rate increase. I think that there's uh, definitely some, some current concerns in those areas. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope your Wednesday was a good one and it was a wet one and boy, awfully cool out there all across North Central Washington. This is our McNeil SkyFi Tower camera as we take a look outside our weather window from this afternoon and boy, a lot of low cloudiness up that way around the Chelan area. And look at that, even some light snow falling at times this afternoon up around the Chelan area. And remember, we talked about this last night snow a possibility in our higher elevations right up until Friday. Also in our forecast we have some isolated thunderstorms a possibility. Our chance will be Thursday and that is region wide across the inland northwest more into north Idaho as we get into Friday but we could see tomorrow they're going to be very brief brief gusty winds a little bit of small hail and infrequent lightning. I know it seems awfully early for a thunderstorm but it is in our forecast. I think you folks in Moses Lake at East will have a little better chance for that tomorrow. We talked about cool temperatures. How about 43 degrees unofficially is all we could get to today. 56 is our normal high temperature and our record of beauty 75 and that was set back in 1994. Low this morning 37 and that's right in line pretty much at 36 where we should be for this time of year. Our record cold 24 degrees and that was set in 1975. So far four one hundredths of an inch of precip. So we haven't been getting a lot of rain out of this system, but just some light drizzle that gets us to 2.4 inches. And that is exactly where we should be as far as precipitation for this time of year. Sunrise 648 and the sun will set for us tonight at 724. All right, taking a look at what we can expect for Thursday. Temperatures much, much warmer than today. 57 for Moses Lake and Afreda, 56 in Quincy, 54 for Wenatchee. Eniat and up in Chelan. Then we're talking mainly lower 50s for the upper elevations, Kashmir into Leavenworth, and even a little bit cooler for you folks at Lake Wenatchee tomorrow with a high temperature of an even 50 degrees. All right, uh, as we get into our weekend, a beautiful Easter weekend is upon us. Here's the storm system that's bringing us the rain now. That will continue to move slowly to the south. A few scattered showers tomorrow, and then that big, beautiful area of high 
high pressure will move in and kick off a warming trend just in time for our Easter weekend. Tonight there is that storm system and it's still bringing some clouds into parts of mainly western Washington tonight. We will see some patchy fog at times. Low temperatures about where we should be into those mid 30s for Thursday. Mostly cloudy could see some isolated thunderstorm activity out of that system and I think most of those will be to our south down around the Tri Cities area on Thursday. High temperatures will be mainly in the mid 50s for Friday. Partly cloudy skies. There goes that area of low pressure from the Pacific Northwest down to about middle California. We'll see partly cloudy skies Friday. Warmer temperatures with highs into the mid and upper 50s getting into the Easter weekend just couldn't be better. Sunny skies and warmer. We're talking right around 60 degrees. If you are traveling this weekend, no problems at all. The temperatures nice all up and down the West Coast. Easter Sunday, even better. There's our friend, high pressure, and it's really building off the coast. We're going to see warmer temperatures on Easter. Highs in the low to mid 60s. Easter Sunday, boy, eat your dinner on the deck or maybe your patio Sunday afternoon for Monday. Look, at all of the clear skies from that area of high pressure, mostly sunny. We're looking at warmer temperatures, highs near that 70 degree mark on Monday. And then as we get you into Tuesday, we're going to see a little bit of compressional heating because we do have a storm system that will move in by Wednesday. But we're talking temperatures near 70 with sunny skies on Tuesday. We might even get into those lower 70s where that orangish color is, especially for Moses Lake and down into the Tri-Cities. Seven day forecast now 35 overnight tonight. Showers and possibly a thunderstorm tomorrow. 50 for your afternoon high temperature. Partly cloudy and warmer Friday and 57. And this is where the nice weather begins on Saturday. Sunny and 60. Sunny and 63 for your Easter Sunday. And then Monday and Tuesday just beautiful. Mostly sunny both days with high temperatures of 69. And that's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Now is a great time to get an offer you'll love on the Accord Hybrid and CRV Hybrid. Inventory is here, so bring on the fun, bring on the weekend getaways, bring on the memories. And get a great offer on a Honda. Name the 2023 Kelly Blue Books KBB.com Best Value Brand. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into your local Honda dealer today. Well, a happy Wednesday. The huge weight lifted off the Seattle Kraken shoulders last night in a 4-0 shutout of Anaheim. Seattle jumped out to a 2-0 lead in the first period at Climate Pledge Arena on goals by Ely Tolvanen and Jordan Everly. The Kraken defense allowed just 12 shots on goal as Joey Decord recorded his second shutout of the season. They got the red jersey on and the guys know they can't hit him. Oh, it's it! Got it! It's Ely Tolvanen! Set up here! first goal in 11 games and the Kraken are off and running. McCann downhill a bit. Everly out in front. They score! It pinballs home. Schwartz on the doorstep. Maybe off Gibson. 3.08 left in the period. Jordan Everly gets a power play goal. 2-0 Seattle. To the outside for Ellie Tolvanen. To the slot. Fumble the shot. They score! Brent Leeson wide up the court, look out, he recovers on Lundestrom, what a dandy by Joey Decor. And now, Beneers will swing out, jailbreak, Seattle, Beneers, Bjorkstrand, Tolvanen, in. Tolvanen, in. Beneers, he scores! That's a game, baby! With an ankle injury, Zellweger, Segris, off Cartier, off the post, Snow Angel, Decor! This way back for Larson. Out in front, tipped wide. One second. And that's cracking hockey, baby. Seattle snapped an eight-game losing streak with last night's win, and players young and old could feel the weight lift off the clubhouse. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty special experience before. It was, uh, 
I expected a lot, and it, it definitely exceeded that. Um, the fans were, were unbelievable. It's such a such a nice rink, and yeah, I, I had a great time. Yeah, I'd say after my first two or three, you kind of settle in once you once you touch the puck and and see that you can make plays here. You kind of you kind of get a little confidence, and um, yeah, I'd say after my first couple, I, I settled in. What did you think of how Logan Morrison played in his NHL debut as well? Yeah, I thought he was great. I thought that whole line was great. Um, when Skarts and and Logan and. You know, it's tough coming, coming and playing your first game, and he had a lot of confidence out there. He's making plays. Um, he was, you know, defensively sound in the right spot all the time. Uh, I thought he was awesome, and, you know, it's, it's fun when guys, you know, come up and get to play. You know, the guys did everything that they needed to do tonight, and they should feel good about that performance. Um, one of the things that's really important is, is to play well, to play hard in front of our fans. Our fans are, you know, amazing. I referenced it earlier today. You know, we're, we're year three, and we have one of the greatest fan bases in the National Hockey League. Anaheim will hang around for another day as the Ducks and Kraken meet again tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. That'll be on Route Sports Northwest. Well, the Mariners wrapped up the preseason with a 7-6 win over San Diego at Petco Park yesterday. The uh, Julio Rodriguez homered in the first and last at bat of the spring as Seattle finished two games above 500 for the Cactus League season. Here's the pitch to Julio swinging a drive deep to left field out to the Brown building out there and goodbye baseball. Out to the base of the Western Metal Supply Company, Julio Rodriguez, a line shot home run, his second home run of the spring. It comes with J.P. aboard, and the Mariners have a very quick 2 to nothing lead here in the top of the first inning. What a bolt by Julio. Well, that feels like a great exclamation point to end spring for Julio Rodriguez. Here is Dylan Moore. The wind the pitch from Michael King. Swing and a drive deep to left field. Profar going back, and this one is gone. Goodbye, baseball. Dylan Moore with his second home run of the spring into the lower deck right off by the Western Metal Supply Company, and it's the Mariners 3 and the Padres 2. Number 2 for Dylan Moore this spring. Here's the pitch of Sanchez. Swung on. A roller up the middle. That's through for a base hit around second base. Williamson running hard. The throw is cut off. He's going to score, and the Mariners have added another. Axel Sanchez drives in a run. It's now 4-2. to two. Mariners with the lead. Timely stolen base right in front of the uh, base hit by Sanchez. And the Mariners uh, pick a run, pick up a run with two outs here in the seventh inning. Nicely done. Casey Lawrence worked five innings, allowing two runs on three hits with a couple of strikeouts and a walk. Seattle returns home to prepare to take on the Boston Red Sox in the first of four games at T-Mobile Park tomorrow night for opening day. It'll start at 7-10 on Root Sports Northwest. Our first broadcast of the spring prep baseball season and quite a matchup between Wenatchee and West Valley yesterday was at Recreation Park. The Rams came in riding a six season stretch of reaching the state 4A tournament, but the Panthers were not impressed as Wenatchee came away with a 3 0 win. Joe Skyleman worked five innings of shutout ball on the mound for the win as uh, the home nine scored runs in the third, fourth, and fifth innings to post the victory. Another action yesterday, Eastmont pulled out a 4 3 non league win over. Freda. Moses Lake stopped Eisenhower at 6-5. Cashmere won the opener of a doubleheader at Kyle Nabenton 4-1. The nightcap ended in a 3-3 time. OMAC beat Quincy 4-1. Chelan crushed Cascade 22-2. Les Schwab B prep baseball scoreboard found Tanaska topping Manson 7-2. Waterville Mansfield blasted Bridgeport 27-7. Brewster beat Okanagan 8-1. Liberty Bell banged Lake Roosevelt 38-0. Kyle Nabenton softball team swept a twin bill from Cascade. Cashmere 10 zip and 5 3 yesterday. Chelan got by Cascade 12 2. Omak edged Quincy 10 8. Tanaska took care of Manson 26 8. Bridgeport beat Waterville Mansfield 21 5. Okanagan blank Brewster 17 0. Lake Roosevelt left Liberty Bell with a 14 4 victory. Well, Wenatchee's Noah Willett and Shawnee Vega scored late in the uh, West Valley last night and tied the game at 3. Then Anthony Garcia scored in overtime to give the Panthers a 4 3 road win in Big Nine South. Soccer. Eastmont also needed extra time to beat Eisenhower on the road. After a scoreless tie through regulation, Edgar Leon scored the golden goal eight minutes into overtime to give the Wildcats a 1-0 win. Another boys soccer last night, Sunnyside blank Moses Lake 4-0. Eastmont, or make that East Valley, stopped afraid of 3-0. Cascade blanked Chelan 6-0. Quincy crushed Omak 8-0. Bridgeport uh, edged Okanagan 1-0. Brewster beat Pateras 5-0. Liberty Bell down Oroville 4-0. 
Finally, congratulations to the Eastmont boys golf team on repeating as Jack Barnes invite winners yesterday at Three Lakes Golf Course in Malaga. Cal Anderson led the charge with a 66 to take medalist honors. That's a look at sports news. Have a happy Wednesday. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more news from around North Central Washington, you can find us at ncwlife.com on our social media channels or on our mobile app for iPhone and Android. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.